Hello everyone, welcome to yet another Irem Showcase video. Today we're going to be contending with ninjas, drums, and samurai. Let's start out with Kid Nikki Radical Ninja for the original Nintendo Entertainment System. And as I did mention previously that Irem was initially uncomfortable with doing her own games on the home market, particularly outside of Japan. So they would sometimes enlist the aid of repeatable, kid-tested, mother-approved companies such as Data East, I mean veritable, amazing Data East, to help them out on the forefront. But luckily later on, they got their group back, much like Stella did, and I'm going to show you some of the phenomenal success they had after that point, that junction in time. But in any case, enjoy this thoroughly awesome, vibrant, bold, beautiful, glorious game, one of the absolute 50 best NES games. In my own personal opinion, it is also incredibly difficult. You die in one singular hit. It is deceptively cute, much like Chipoki No Ralph for PlayStation 1, which I showcased before. But in the event you have legitimately beat this game from beginning to end, uh, by all means, dabble in some cheat codery. Go into Retro Settings, Quick Menu, Cheats, Load Cheat File Replace, and make sure you have the Cheats H mod installed for my core set. And we're going to see what we have to work with here for Nintendo Kid Nicky. And I would not at all recommend using these codes prematurely until you true and legit beat a game from beginning to end. Otherwise, you're going to defeat the overall fun factor and enjoyment of the game as a whole. And I went right past Kid Nicky there. Okay, we have uh, Infinity Lives, Ninja Jumping Power, start at round 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and Invincibility. For the intent of this video, we're going to activate Ninja Jumping Power Mode Activate. And then we're going to apply the changes. And I would highly recommend disabling these codes before you exit the game. Otherwise, one month from now, your grandmother might be playing the game on the couch and wonder why her beloved Kid Nicky is gallivanting about like he's on performance enhancing drugs. And then we have a uh, come here enemy, much like in Mortal Kombat. And this predates Mortal Kombat by even a few years. So there's definitely a bit of influence in Mortal Kombat from games like Kid Nicky, which predates them by a few years. Right now, we're going to be playing Kid Nicky in an even other cooler way. From the last update, MAME 2003 Plus, the artwork, uh, authentic arcade experience Border H mod. And we're going to be loading up right now. Okay. And yes, if you want to have a more true home experience, I mean, feel like you're right at the arcade cabinet, install this H mod from the last update and run with MAME 2003 Plus. You can run over 100 arcade games this way. And I'm going to keep updating this in the future. Okay, and this is amazingly cool. And we're going to do a direct comparison of this 2D home version and see what distinctive differences there are. One of which I'm pretty sure I know right away. I mean, obviously the sound effects are not going to be as true to life as they would be on the home version as they would be in the arcade version. But you'll see for yourself when I start attacking enemies. It sounds like a true to life, authentic sword plank. And that is amazing. But another thing that's very, very cool, and um, I'm a big, big fan of the custom OSTs that are out in my core set, such as NBA Jam, Mortal Kombat, and of course, uh, Final Fight, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, and so on. Imagine if we replace the outset of the internal game percussion with real true life drummery. Let's do that right now. This is going to go out in the next core set update. Simply update, load the game, and you're golden. By all means, put on your headphones for this portion because I cranked up the bass for your overall enjoyment. Let's enter in this simple non-JRPG plot device, much like Blaster Master, where you're rescuing your frog. But in this case, we're trying to help an injured bird. And let's cue in the drums and uh, drum mode activate. Enjoy, guys and gals. And yes, this definitely adds an element of awesomeness, having true life drummery in this game. And here you go. And we're going to activate Turbo Fire because it's definitely something I like to have in my shmup games and my ninja games. I'm going to hold down the attack button and the select button until I have Turbo Fire mode activate. There we go. And it feels like I'm rubbing a dog's belly and it's kicking feet all about every which way but loose. Very, very funny stuff indeed. And you ever notice that Kid Nicky looks quite a bit like uh, Davy Crockett? I find that kind of silly indeed. This is a tremendously difficult game. I'm hoping I can at least get to the end of uh, boss in this uh, showcase here. Luckily, we have Infinity Continues, but you cannot start where you die. You have to actually go back to the last checkpoint. And of course, we have uh, red enemies in this game, uh, which are much like in Star Trek with the uh, non-cast members. Anybody that wears the red shirt always meets the demise. That is not at all uh, likable. 
and I'm very, very uh, ecstatic about the upcoming uh, Star Trek reboot that's going to have uh, Sir, uh, you know, the Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart, who plays Captain Picard in the original Next Generation. I think that's going to be amazingly cool having him back. But here we go, boss battle mode activate. And uh, you cannot simply match, you have to actually learn the boss pattern there. It's been a while since I last played this, but I think I can get this. And I lost my sword, I mean, very, very cool. Okay, it looks like I have uh, maybe one more hit to take this guy down. Okay, I got him, guys and gals. And we're going to move on to some more awesomeness. Good job, Kid Nikki. the adventure goes on. And I did mention uh, that Iram did eventually come around and found their groove. Um, I'm going to show you right now one game they did find their groove with, which is absolutely mind-blown, and probably one of the very first arcade games. Do come to home and get a nearly perfect 10 out of 10 review by many magazines. And we're going to be playing it right now. Ninja Spirit. This is so cool of a game. It is actually better than the arcade version for several reasons. One of which is uh, in the arcade version you die in one single hit. This actually has a PC Engine mode where it takes you 5 hits to die. I still have my Turbo my, uh, Fire mode activate. Which is cool for this game as you will see. Much like in Legend of Cage. But right here you can go to PC Engine mode. Five hits, you die, or you can go to arcade mode where you die and one hit. I would recommend doing PC Engine mode initially. But this is a true variable gem of an arcade to home conversion. One of the first 10 out of 10 games and games like uh, the game magazine such as Electronic Game and Monthly and such. And this did come out before, of course, uh, Strider. Strider would probably be the next one after this that I would think of. And I do have Turbo Fire mode activate. I'm nearly invincible with Turbo Fire. Much like in Legend of Cage, which Taito made. And you can also push the select button to switch between various ninja weapons. But I like using the sword as my main weapon. I mean, I can do the shuriken. Many different weapons, but I love using my sword as my primary weapon. And you'll see what I mean. I mean, there's a thing that you get in this game, much like in Ninja Game 2, with the spirits and such, and it really makes this game much, much cooler. But let's get the show on the road. We're going to at least get to the end boss here. There we go, Ninja Spirit, just like a Ninja Gaiden 2. That is one of my favorite elements of Ninja Gaiden 2. Okay. We need a couple more spirits here. We need to at least have at least uh, one or two more spirits if we can get them. And again, with Turbo Fire Mode Activate, you're practically invincible in games like this. And of course, uh, Legend of Cage. And Legend of the Cage, again, was made by Taito, who I'm uh, going to be showcasing probably after I do Data East. But by all means, check out this game if you've never played it before. It is one of the best arcade to home experiences that was out in the early 1990s, uh, late 80s. Okay, look at that awesomeness. Two spirits and this glorified weaponness here. I don't think I'm going to have any difficulty whatsoever taking on the end boss now. And there's actually another uh, samurai game that uh, I ever made that is not at all well known. I'm going to be showcasing that next. Something that uh, you guys and gals might thoroughly enjoy if you've never even heard of it. And you can definitely tell by the uh, boss pattern here that this is a uh, true and uh, sure, without a doubt, Iron game. Has a little bit of a shmup attitude here. Okay, let's take this guy down. And I have many, many ninja anecdotes from the past. I mean, uh, many, many years ago, my friend used to take jujitsu classes on Fridays, and he would literally go to a video store afterwards and rent any ninja movie, martial arts movie and such. We watched all the John Clover and Dan movies. Steven Seagal, Chuck Norris, I mean, many Japanese, uh, Asian ones, and I mean... And not only that, he would actually teach me some of the jujitsu moves. I mean, I mean, uh, it really helped out. It's more of a defensive thing. It's not really truly offensive, but you learn how to use a person's own uh, attacks against them. Like if somebody throws a punch at you, you grab the punch and use it against them. Kind of like a velocity thing. And look, this looks like a lot like a Legend of Cage right now. Very, very awesome stuff. But in any case, we're going to move on to this other game for the arcade that uh, is also... A very, very unknown, veritable gem of a game that I ever made, and uh, it's called Kengo. We're going to go to the right to get there a little bit faster. And this is the game you're not going to want to have Turbo Fire Mode activate on. 
But yes, uh, many years ago, I went through a whole gamut of many, many martial arts movies. I mean, I loved American Ninja 1 and 2. I loved all the John Cloven Dan movies, like Bloodsport. And I found out much later on that there's a conspiracy about uh, whether or not the validity of the true Bloodsport character existed, or if it was all a farce. I mean, very, very interesting story if you ever look it up. But when I start this game, I'm going to actually uh, disable my turbo fire mode at three because you're not going to want it for this game in particular. Because you have a charge blast much like you do in our type. So I disabled my turbo fire and now I have my charge blast. Very, very cool game. If you like stuff like Ninja Gaiden or Revenge of Shinobi, you'll be right at home with this game. We're going to at least get to the first end boss in this stage. This feels like a game that would fit right at home on the Sega Genesis, aka Mega Drive, for sure. Some of the later levels actually remind me quite a bit of Magician Lord and such. Okay. I'm really, really digging this charge blast. You do level up throughout the course of the game as well. It gets more spectacularly cool. And again, you can definitely tell Irem is behind this game. And I'm jumping by pushing the up button just like I do with Legend of Cage. I got this. Okay, level up. Let's get to the first end boss here before we move on to some more ninja awesomeness. Many of you might not know that uh, ninjas, uh, historically speaking, were actually typically mercenaries or assassins for hire. That's how it worked out. Okay, we should be near the end boss here. And we should have at least one more ninja game to showcase after this. I mean, obviously it is a given which one I'm going to be showcasing next. That's definitely true, uh, Irem, uh, right there. Like a little pattern, like a shmup formation with the ninjas. These really do sound like Sega Genesis, uh, quality sound effects here. In music. Okay, we're on the boss battle. Let's take her down. I got this. That actually reminds me quite a bit of uh, Strider style music too, with some of the rhythms that are going on. Okay, now we got one more game that we definitely have to showcase by Iron. We're going to be playing uh, none other than Ninja Baseball Batman. We're going to be playing it in a very special way right now. We're going to be doing a four player mode activate. There's quite an interesting story behind Ninja Baseball Batman, as you will see in a moment here. Because at the time, uh, many things were popular, such as TMNT, Simpsons, X-Men, and so on. A guy came up with a amalgamation, a combination of many different ideas and threw them into a blender. And we got uh, TMNT, Power Rangers, Batman, Walking Tall with uh, Joe Don Baker, and so on. I mean, and they even got the Gottlieb artist, you know, the great, great uh, artist from the pinball company, to help out on this. But I mean, unfortunately... This game didn't do too well because it didn't have a great marketing plan. But let's get this show on the road here. and um, You can even see from the main cast members here, we have characters obviously based on Jose Canseco, Ryan Sandberg, Roger Clements, and even Daryl Strawberry. But we're going to do a four-player mode activate. And I love the graphical style to this game. It's very, very much like uh, Cuphead on Xbox One. And this game runs best on MAME 2003 Extreme. I mean, no other core runs this nearly as well, unfortunately. There's still a little bit of encryption. That's why you have to slow down here and there, especially between levels. But here we go. We're going to activate Turbo Fire Mode. Activate. And there we go. Let's take this guy down. Now, I love these style of games. I mean, there are a few other games that are like this, which I'll showcase in future videos. But uh, there are even a whole uh, genre called Cutem Ups. So, uh, very, very funny genre indeed. But running much better than, than any other core could possibly run them. And let's get to the first boss at least with four player mode activate. If you do the jump and the attack button at the same time, you can, uh, at the expense of some of your health, do special attacks which are really, really cool indeed. And I'm loving the cast of characters there. Very, very awesome. 
Fast paced, frenetic, and very, very interesting. You gotta wonder what these people were on when they made this game. I mean, either they had a twisted sense of humor or they were obviously on something. Much like uh, the Atari days when they had games like uh, Ninja Golf for the Atari 7800, which I showcased before, they were obviously on something when they made that game. But I'm not complaining because this is a, just truly entertaining indeed. Okay. There's no other way to experience this other than four-player mode activity. It definitely adds to the element of awesomeness here. Okay. There's just so much crazy on-screen shenanigans going on right now. It is ridiculous. And, uh, surprisingly, only 43 units of the soda in the United States. I mean, it was an absolute flop in the United States. Only 43 arcade units ever made it to existence in the United States. But in Japan, it had uh, considerable success otherwise. I still think it's because of the marketing uh, just wasn't there for this. And obviously, if you compare this to stuff like Boondock Saints and Heathers, which are movies that flopped in the theater, but once they made it to the home market, they had tremendous success. Much like this game did when it finally made it into implementation within the context of MAME, 2000, uh, MAME way back, 20 years ago. Very, very cool stuff. Look how crazy this is. We got this guy to go. This is one of the biggest games that I really, really wanted to have working well for MAME 2003 uh, Extreme over a year ago, as many of you have seen in my previous videos. Go down, Windy Plane. We'll do just a little bit of the second stage to see what it's all about. Okay, you're going down. Now, I think there's a, more of a boss meter here because I have four characters playing, but uh, I can live with that. Kind of reminds me of some of the flashy attacks that you have in Marvel vs. Capcom. Okay, almost done. Let's see what we have in store for the second stage. Okay, here we go. Fantastic game indeed. I mean, I'm going to show you another game probably at the end of this video. Then I'd highly recommend if you love games that have these uh, typical art style like this, which is just crazy, crazy cool. But we're going to do the second stage for a brief moment here and see what it's all about. And by the way, if you ever start this game and it has graphical glitches, simply restart it and you should be good to go. But look how crazy this is. This is insanely cool. And I'm loving this soundtrack, it sounds incredibly cool on a sound system. These enemies look like they're right out of uh, Return to Oz. Very, very interesting movie. And uh, by the way, I'm going to show you one other game that I'd highly recommend if you like this art style. It's not made by Iron, but it's going to be the last game I showcase in this video. I'm going to disable Turbo Fire right now. And I'm going to exit the game. I'm going to go to a Neo Geo game called uh, Captain Tomade. If you love this art style right here for Ninja Baseball Batman, you're going to absolutely love the art style of Captain Tomade. And we're going to go to that right now. Okay, Neo Captain Tomade. And uh, this game has to be seen to believe. This thoroughly surprised me many years ago. One thing I love about Neo Geo is you can just uh, let the game play in the attract mode. It'll show you how to play the game. You don't even need to read the manual. But let's get the show on the road here. And I am running with Unibiles with MAME 2003 Extreme, as I showcased in previous videos. So you can do the cheat codes and all them dip switches and all that cool stuff. But uh, look at this craziness here. See, it shows me how to play the game if I want to see the instructions right there. That is very cool. More games need to do this. But look at this insanity here. This is actually uh, befitting 
of a whole subgenre of shmups called cute em ups But I'm never ever going to call these cute em ups I'm gonna consider them all shmups. I mean, Proteus and us, stuff like that, Twin B, all fit within the context of this, as well as Cho and Nikki, but these are cute em ups Very, very interesting indeed. And I love this uh, soundtrack here. It sounds very much like a Saturday morning cartoon esque uh, soundtrack going on here. I was definitely surprised when I discovered this many, many years ago, randomly playing throughout MAME. Games like this, a Ninja Baseball Batman, definitely didn't have their uh, time of day when they were in the arcades, but much later on when they made it to the home front, I mean, obviously these games did much, much better, just like Boondock Saints and Heathers. But definitely check out Captain Tom of Day. You'll be very, very happy and pleased with the end result because it is a great, great game without a doubt. And uh, I guess I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to do a random Ninja game as the final game of this video. I mean, if you love games like Ninja Gaiden, Shinobi, and even Rolling Thunder, I'm going to show you this obscure, little-known gem of a game on Game Boy Advance, which is definitely worth your time of day. Especially if you like ninja games. Again, this is also not made by Irem, but I'd highly recommend checking it out. It's called Ninja 5-0. Very and of course, Konami is behind this amazing mashup of elements of games such as Ninja Gaiden, Shinobi, Rolling Thunder, and even Bionic Commando with an impeccable soundtrack to boot. Again, the last two games, Captain Tamade and Ninja 5-0 have nothing to do with Irem. These are just games that I'm recommending if you like uh, Ninja Baseball Batman or Ninja games in general because these are both incredibly cool games that definitely check out. Uh, but let's check the show on the road here. I have a shuriken at the bottom left there, which could be leveled up. And the one thing to note is if you lose your health, if you have a leveled up shuriken, your power will diminish as well. Right there, I'm level 2. Very, very cool. But if I start losing health, my power is going to go down. You even have a little bit of a binary commando element here with the uh, grappler. Right there, you got to get used to that, especially if you play games like binary commando. Again, don't lose health or you're going to lose your power-ups. I'm going to try to avoid losing my power-ups there. I need a key to get to that door, a red key. You can use your uh, R1 sword to take out the little chest and such. Really digging this game. Awesome, awesome game. See if we can at least beat the first stage here. There we got a blue key. And much like the first level of Robocop, also made by Data East, uh, we have a hostage that we have to rescue. I mean, I could just shoot the uh, right through the person if I want to, but I'm going to try to take it out legitimately. There we go. And what happens if you shoot the hostage is you just lose health. That's your main penalty, losing health. But very, very cool game indeed, worth checking out, and truly relatively unknown. And there we have a ninja that's deflecting my attack, so I'm just going to use my sword attack. I need to get my uh, shuriken leveled up a little bit more for some more weapon awesomeness here. I need a red key for that again. Uh, we have a blue key door here. There we go. Very addictive game without a doubt. Got to use a little bit of my uh, Bina Commando awesomeness there to get through the stage. Definitely a lot more manageable if you're fully leveled up like I am. I mean, to level 2. But you can even get to level 3 and on. There we go, level 3. Look at that awesomeness. Feels like something right out of our type there. But of course I just got hit and lost my level 3. But you can see why. I just lost health and I lost my power up. There we go. We got the yellow key. Let's go back to that yellow door. Very 
pretty cool. Really digging the uh, mobility in this game. Now we just need the last key. There we go, level three again. Let's hopefully I can keep it this time. Oh great. Should have seen that coming. Again, it's gonna take a little bit to get used to these controls unless you know games such as Bionic Commando fairly well. There we go, I lost help because I took out the uh, victim, the hostage, so to speak. Give me another key here. There we go, red key. Now I just need some health or something. Now we should be able to finish this stage now because I have the red key. The final key I need for the stage. Again, very awesome game. Hopefully you guys and gals have found some games to enjoy from this video that you've never played before. And we're gonna go to the red key. Stage clear. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. There'll be more to come and the update will be out by the weekend.